Hey everybody, it's Mr. Bonhomme. About to give you a lesson real quick. This has to do with fractions on a number line. We saw fractions and actually made fractions with a bar model or, you know, a rectangle. But now we're going to see how to transfer it to a number line. We could place whole numbers and we could place fractions on a number line. Let's find out. First thing you want to do, just like when you made your bar, and we compared fractions, we made some bars under the same length to compare them. The best way is we want to make some lines, all right? Now, I don't have anything that's going to keep my arm kind of straight, but as straight as possible. And a fraction, when we are trying to determine a fraction, it is how many equal parts to come together and create one whole. So how many of those unit fractions will actually make a whole? So on our number line, we're always going to start with zero. And for now, we're going to end with one whole. Because that's what we've been working on. Fractions that are from zero up to one whole. Now, I'm going to draw a line right under. That's going to be about the same length, right? It's not straight, but it's the same length. The beginning and the end benchmarks are right below each other. So I'm still going to label this zero, and I'm still going to label this one whole. All right? Under this, I'm going to make another one. And you can just keep on practicing this at home because it's good to be practicing. Make sure that you label it zero and one whole. This is very key, very important. Now, I want you to think hmm, what numbers can I actually put on this number line from zero to one whole? We've been learning about fractions, we've been learning about how many pieces it makes to make one whole and that the denominator tells us how many equal parts we are splitting up each whole all right so i want us to think about this number line from zero to one whole when we look at it let's first start with two equal parts when we break a whole into two equal parts that means that it gets split about in the middle so that's about the middle right there. Now, the reason why I put zero and one hole on the bottom is because I really want to put my fractions on the top to see and compare where they are to zero and to one hole. Keep it organized. You want to keep your math as organized as possible. So we know that from here to here is one half. So where you land will actually be where we label it, one half. And since this is zero over here, we're just going to put zero halves because that's zero. We don't have anything in that numerator. That's nothing right there. Here, we have one out of the two jumps necessary to make one hole. So that's why right here in the middle is one half. We're going to label it one half. I hope that everybody can see. The birds are chirping really loud out here, but it's a nice day. And over here, if we went from zero halves to one half, we add one more half, which is this whole space right here. We're going to get to two halves, which is equivalent to one whole. So now it makes a bit more sense about why I decided to put the one hole on the bottom because it's equivalent or the same amount of space, same size as two halves. Next, we're going to go to this number line, this one right here in the middle. And we're going to partition it into four equal parts, just like we did with our fraction bar. And when you made your own fractions at home, this right here is where we're going to start. First, we're going to split it in half. And when we split each half in half, we will get fourths. Let's check it out. So from right here to right here, 
I'm going to split this in half as much as possible. It's not going to be perfect. I'm going to go to this side, and I'm going to split this side in half also. Now let's see how many equal parts we have. I have one, two, three, and four. So there are four equal parts that make up this one whole. So over here, I'm going to start with the zero. This is zero out of four. I take one jump. Now this is one fourth. I take one more jump. This is two fourths. And if you see, two fourths is the same amount, same distance away from zero as one half. I take another jump and I land here, which is three fourths, three out of four. And I take my fourth jump which is four fourths. My numerator is four, my denominator is four. On this number line, the denominator is four because it took four equal jumps or four equal parts to make that one whole. And then this bottom number line, what we're gonna do is turn it into eight equal parts. And the way that we do that is you can start with halves, break this in half, and then think, hmm, all right, after I have a half, I break each half to get fourths. So I'm going to do that step. And this time I'll do it in red. So this is a fourth. This is a fourth. You see I have one, two, three, four equal parts to make up that one hole. But I want to get eight equal parts. That means I'm going to split each one of these fourths in half. And I'll use blue for that. So this is half of that. This is half of that fourth. This is half of a fourth. And this is half of a fourth. So now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight equal parts that make one whole. So I partition this number line from zero to one whole into eight equal parts. And now I'm gonna label it. This is zero eighths. This right here is one eighth. That's a little jump. Here's another little jump. This right here is two eighths. Another jump. 3 eighths, one more jump, 4 eighths. And you can start to compare like 2 eighths and 1 fourth, 1 eighth and 1 fourth. You can see which one is further away from zero to see which ones are uh, larger or smaller or actually might be equivalent, which means that they are the same size or the same distance away from zero. All right. One more jump, this is five eighths. One more jump, six eighths. One more jump, seven eighths. And our last jump, and this is eight eighths. I hope everybody can see. Let me bring this up a little bit. That might be a little bit better. Now when we look at this, this number line is partitioned into two equal parts, halves. This number line partitioned into fourths, four equal parts. That's why the denominator is four. And this third number line is partitioned into eights. Now, what I'm going to do is do two more number lines. We are going to be working with thirds and also sixths. To make thirds, we're kind of going to use this one half number line as a way to help us out but it's a little bit different when we make thirds and six so i'll make another number line the same length and i'll label it zero one hole remember i'm putting a one hole on the bottom zero and one hole now if I want to break it up into three equal parts, it's a little bit tricky when I'm doing it as a number line, 
But I remember that a third is not as big as a half, but it's not as small as a fourth. It's kind of in between there. So if I kind of look a little bit past one fourth, but a little bit less than one half, a third would kind of be over here. So it's a little bit closer to one half than it is in the middle. So one half would be like right here. And then one third would be a little bit close, a little bit close. So I'll say one third is about like right there. And I'm gonna try my hardest to look where this half is and make another little line a little bit past one half, which I think would go right here. I think that's pretty good. And let's see, I have one, two, three equal parts. So that means I partition this whole into thirds. And I'm gonna label it. This is zero out of three. This is one out of three or one third because it's one jump out of three to make one hole. One, two, two jumps out of three or two thirds. And here we have three jumps out of three to make one hole. So three thirds, remember, is equivalent to one hole. Eight eighths is equivalent to one hole. Four fourths is equivalent to one hole. Two halves are equivalent to one hole as well. And now we are going to look at six. Once again, we're going to make a number line right under the same length. One hole. This is getting trickier and trickier. One hole. And this over here is zero. As you see, when you have one third, you go work with one six. Because all you have to do is split these thirds in half. If you want to figure out six, you first have to do thirds, then split them in half. So I will bring down this line for thirds right here. And then we're going to split those in half. So right about here, I come down, I split that in half. In the middle of one third and two thirds, I come down right there in half. Between two-thirds and three-thirds, I come down. I split that in half. And let's see how many equal parts I have. I have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So now I need to label this. Over here, I have zero out of six jumps because we start at zero. Over here, I take one jump. Bomb. I land right there. So this is one out of six jumps or one six that's a better way of saying it i take another jump that's two six and you can even compare where two six is to one third up here if you're doing it correctly from two six i add one more jump and this is three six take a look at where three six is and slowly go up to compare what is the same distance away from zero as three six? Those are the equivalent fractions. Let me put my screen up a little bit. I take one more jump. This is four six. And I'm making sure to label right above the little mark because that's where your jump stops. So you have to label it there. I take another jump and now I'm at five six. And I take my final jump on this number line and I'm at six six, which is equivalent to one whole. So as you can see, we have halves, we have fourths, we have eighths, we have thirds, and we have six. To make fourths, you need to make halves four first. To make eights, you have to make halves, then fourths, then you can make eights on a number line. It's easier to compare it. If you want to make six, you had to make thirds also. And remember, when you're doing thirds, look at how you did it for halves, and you know that thirds are a little bit smaller than halves. Remember that. But thirds are also a little bit bigger than fourths. 
So keep on practicing at home. Try to make these different number lines. I'll have a assignment up so then you can practice some more with that as well. It's Mr. Bonome. See ya.